in this scenario this place. Um, so, um, uh, this work had been carried out uh, uh, on the experimental side by my students, Lord Rua, uh, Matthew Desjardins, Matthew D'Artay, who is over there, uh, Timo Kubins, and Jeremy Vieno, and Matthew Delbey. On the theory side, uh, 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 so uh, we have collaborated uh, uh, with Autre Cote, and in the last part uh, of the talk, uh, I will show you numerization group data uh, from Mansour Choi and Minchu Lee. We would like to acknowledge all these people for the various discussions we had with them. So first of all, I you will have some kind of deja vu feeling. Uh, uh, in my talk, uh, if you compare to the talk of Mircea, because uh, many, uh, so, like many of the um, uh, motivations uh, in our experiments are actually similar to the motivations which uh, Mircea uh, depicted to you. So, uh, we're a little with cavity quantum electrodynamics experiments with carbon nanotubes, and uh, cavity quantum electrodynamics uh, actually deals with the interaction between light and matter at the most elementary level. So, down to a single uh, atom, coupled to a single photon. So, this is uh, an ex so a cavity quantum electrodynamics setup uh, which we like particularly in Paris. Uh, so, this is a Rydberg atom interacting with the uh, superconducting mirror cavity. <laughs> So in the group of uh, Serge Arroz and Michel Rano and Michel Bruyne. And this physics uh, actually uh, has been transferred on chip uh, about a decade ago uh, uh, in uh, superconducting circuits. So this is uh, uh, now a very famous example by the group of Rothschild of uh, 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 in the experiment carried out by Andreas Varov back in 2004. And both these two systems are actually described to a great extent by the same Hamiltonian, which is here. This is the James Hamilton's Hamiltonian, uh, where here you have a, a, the two level system part, here you have the cavity uh, photons part, and here you have the coupling term. And one particularly interesting regime uh, of that uh, uh, kind of uh, coupled system is when uh, this coupling constant here uh, exceeds the dissipation of both the photons and the atoms which is called the strong coupling regime. And, uh, uh, so, uh, and in this spirit, uh, uh, we actually conduct experiments uh, with carbon uh, nanotubes embedded into uh, cavities. And this uh, 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 strong coupling regime will actually be discussed this afternoon by Matthew now tonight. And I'm going to show you to now this morning that one can do actually other things a bit connected to what Mircea uh, was telling you. So, uh, in the top there is the cavity uh, part, and there is the at atom part, or the, which in our case will be the carbon nanotube. So let's start with uh, uh, defining what the, uh, the cavity, uh, what, what kind of cavity we use. Uh, so these are superconducting coplanar wave-like cavities, uh, which look like that. Uh, and so we send in a, a microwave field here, we measure what is transmitted here. So the typical uh, fundamental frequency range of our microwave cavities are in the 6 to 7 gigahertz. And there are pretty high finesse ca cavities about, uh, which we have with quality factors of about 15,000. And measurements are carried out at uh, uh, low temperatures uh, in the range of 20 millikelvin to 250 millikelvin. When we operate at 20 millikelvin, the, uh, uh, the systems, uh, this, this kind of cavity is in its ground state, so there are the zero thermal closure. Okay, so um, now let's describe the atom part. Uh, and so there are two kinds of uh, systems which we can think of uh, uh, using uh, uh, carbon nanotubes, with, uh, as I'm going to show you, not only carbon nanotubes. Uh, so there are kind of closed systems, and maybe one of the most generic closed systems which we can think of is a double quantum dot uh, in, in the context of uh, mesoscopic uh, uh, circuits, such as the ones I will, I will discuss. So, for example, you can encode information in the, of the, in the um, uh, electron being on the left and the right dot, uh, or in the spin of the electron. So this is uh, uh, essentially what I will call a closed system, and this, is, this can be useful if we couple this guy to microwave cavity for quantum information. Okay, on the other uh, part of the Q graph, this is uh, what I will call uh, an open system, because now I assume that this electron can hop back and forth uh, very strongly to the reservoirs here, to the fermionic reservoirs. And this, uh, uh, if now we couple this line to microwave photons, I will show you that uh, 
one can understand things uh, proper. Um, impurity physics in a different way, uh, which is something which uh, is important in more general condensed matter problem. Okay. And so depending on how these systems are coupled to the fermionic leads, you can, of course, lead, go to, towards more the uh, open quantum system limit or to more the more closed quantum system limit. Okay, so now let's describe what we have in mind be to, uh, behind uh, uh, light mesh coupling. So the idea now is that these uh, um, um, conductors host electrons, uh, so, uh, and so that the density of electrons uh, couples to the electric field of the uh, microwave photons. Uh, and which can essentially uh, uh, induce both internal transitions, for example, uh, the microwave light uh, can uh, uh, bring this electron from here to there. This is not like an internal transition. And of course, it can bring this electron from here to the reservoirs, uh, uh, and which this is this kind of uh, uh, transition which I will describe today. Uh, uh, and uh, Matthew Dante will uh, explain him what we can do uh, using that kind of transition this afternoon. But since we're dealing with the mesoscopic system, um, so the electric dipoles related to both these transitions are actually fairly large in the range of 10 to 100 megahertz, uh, which is actually uh, uh, a sizable part of the uh, fundamental frequency uh, of the microwave cavity. And so uh, these large dipoles are interesting uh, because now we can read out these kind of systems uh, with microwave photons uh, rather efficiently. <coughs> Okay, and so here is, uh, this is a bit in the spirit of what Mircha showed you uh, 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 in the previous talk uh, uh, of what uh, uh, we can do with this uh, coupled uh, um, mesoscopic circuit uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, cavity. So the idea is uh, to transfer the, uh, the um, uh, methods uh, uh, of cavity or circuit quantum electrodynamics which have taught us how to probe and manipulate microscopic or macroscopic systems uh, to hybrid mesoscopic circuits, and in our case, this is going to be quantum dot circuits. So, the, of course, uh, uh, um, we're not the only ones to, to do this. So, we, we implement that kind of system experimentally, as we will see, uh, using carbon nanotube based uh, hybrid mesoscopic circuits. But there are also our friends in Zurich uh, uh, working with the two dimensional electron gas, so at Princeton, they're using Inumers 9 nano wires. And there are many other uh, uh, new results also uh, with RFP. Okay, so the first question which one can ask is similarly to what was done for atomic physics or superconducting circuits, is it possible in that kind of setup to achieve the strong coupling uh, regime between the quantum dot circuits using internal transitions uh, and uh, microwave cavities? So this is going to be the uh, subject of the talk of Matthew Data in this afternoon. And I'm going to show you that with that kind of architecture, uh, one in fact uh, can go out from the uh, real world atomic physics and address more condensed matter oriented questions. Okay, so in order to understand what is going on, uh, let's go from the atomic uh, physics, uh, uh, let's say, like spirit, uh, uh, to the condensed matter spirit and, uh, and try to establish a common vocabulary of what the, uh, the resonator uh, is measuring. So if we start uh, with uh, uh, an internal transition, where, which is uh, related to a, a transition frequency, so you have some kind of doublet in your, in your system, which is characterized by an internal frequency, which is uh, which I call omega double uh, dqd for double quantum dot. Uh, in fact, uh, um, uh, the cavity will be um, um, sensitive to that kind of uh, 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 transition because this transition is, of course, reflected into the charge susceptibility of the system. So this is a, a generic uh, uh, a transmission which one can expect. And so you can work it out, for example, with an input-output formalism, which uh, Mircha showed you before. Uh, this is the kind of transmission you expect. And this is the bare cavity frequency. That's its bare um, uh, line width. And here, this is uh, uh, the coupling. This is the term rising from the coupling between the um, cavity photons and uh, the uh, electronic system which is the charge susceptibility. And, and of course, in the charge susceptibility, you have uh, uh, the transition of the doublet. You also have its length. And generally, what you will see if you measure uh, that kind of uh, uh, transmission, in the real part, uh, uh, let's say, in the phase uh, of the uh, uh, transmitted microwave signal, will be more sensitive to the real part of the charge susceptibility. We'll have some kind of uh, final line, uh, line, line shape uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the signal. 
And the imaginary part will be more sensitive to the absorption. We'll have some kind of dip here. And both these uh, features occur whenever the cavity frequency is resonant with the delta <laughs> frequency, which means that by measuring the cavity, you essentially measure a cut of uh, uh, the, the hybrid uh, uh, system spectrum, uh, which is related to this resonance condition. And as you can essentially change usually uh, this uh, uh, internal transition with control parameters, this is how you can come back to the dispersion relation to the spectrum of your uh, system. Okay, but now if we open more the system, um, so we still uh, measure the same thing uh, with the cavity, but now the charge susceptibility uh, actually has a part where, uh, which is connected to the, the hopping of electrons from the, uh, let's say, the, the, the mesoscopic region to the reservoirs. And uh, so for describing it, uh, uh, you can, uh, it's actually um, uh, interesting to use a, um, uh, for example, Kelly from Malzi, which allows you to uh, account properly for the dissipation of the system. And there is one particularly uh, simple limit where you can you, you see what is going on, is what we call the adiabatic limit, uh, where the microwave frequency is actually smaller than any of the other uh, frequencies in, in the electronic system. In that case, uh, the charge susceptibility becomes just the compressibility of the electronic system. And therefore, the cavity provides a, a direct access to the compressibility of the system. And compressibility is particularly interesting, for example, whenever we have uh, interactions on the electronic system. And this is in this period now that uh, uh, using the, this uh, uh, formalism that I will uh, uh, give you uh, uh, two examples of what we did recently. Uh, the first example is to uh, understand in a different manner uh, mesoscopic transport uh, using a, a, a specific setup. Uh, and the, the last example will be to show you how we can measure using the cavities the charge compressibility in the condo system. Okay. So, okay, this is going to be the, the, uh, the talk of this afternoon. And now uh, we will directly go to this, uh, um, uh, uh, to this, uh, to this question. Okay. But, uh, of course, before uh, addressing these questions, one has to actually make the samples and to uh, uh, do the measurements. And uh, here is a brief sketch of how we do the, our measurements. Uh, this is a layout of our microwave cavity. So this is a coconut waveguide cavity that's an optical uh, uh, picture. So here this, this is the input, here this is output. And uh, here are the mirrors uh, uh, of our cavity. These are interruptions into the central uh, conductor of the microwave cavity. So this is how we measure the uh, transmission uh, uh, phase and amplitude uh, of the, uh, uh, this uh, microwave uh, um, uh, cavity. So we have uh, progenic amplifiers uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, we measure um, uh, like that uh, the uh, transmission properties of this microwave cavity. And uh, simultaneously uh, we can measure the DC current properties, so the low frequency current properties uh, uh, in this uh, um, uh, mesoscopic system. Okay. So the first example I'm going to show you is how we can understand uh, now the um, uh, transport uh, um, in a superconducting uh, quantum dot normal uh, setup in a cavity. And this is a bit connected, as you will see, to what Mircea has shown you, uh, uh, because now many people are trying uh, and uh, making hybrid uh, uh, superconducting wire, superconductor, uh, mesoscopic region uh, uh, systems. And I'm going to show you that now the microwave cavity is able to tell us uh, uh, more than what we can see in actually the, the, the low frequency current. So uh, now essentially what I have done is I have zoomed in that kind of region here and I show you the typical device which we have. And the typical device which we have here uh, is a, a, a single magnitude here with a, a superconducting slab, uh, uh, which is for like an electrode. And uh, uh, here you have normal electrodes. And this uh, fork geometry goes to the central pin of the resonator. This is how the microwaves excite the electronic system. And we have control knobs, uh, electric, electric control knobs, which allow us to tune essentially uh, the um, uh, potential in uh, the nanotube. Um, and in our case, uh, um, so uh, Matthew will show you uh, another regime of this, uh, of this setup. But in our case, this behaves as a single quantum dot coupled to a superconductor and to uh, a normal and non-superconducting reservoir. 
So here, uh, just to uh, uh, summarize the uh, uh, resonator parameters, uh, so uh, it's 6.6 gigahertz, so it's a poly factor around 10,000. And the measurements are, what, this is the measurements which we do. We simultaneously measure the current at low frequency flowing through the system and the resonator, resonator transmission, uh, both the amplitude and the phase. Okay. So here is a, uh, like a sketch of the device, so in the cavity. And here is a, uh, uh, what we have uh, when we measure the current through the device as a function of the gate electrode. So here is more the, so the, this is one of the two knobs uh, which, we, uh, which changes the uh, position of the uh, uh, energy levels onto the dot in this axis. And this is the bias which we apply from, uh, from this guy to this guy here in order to drive a finite current. So you see Coulomb diamonds here. But what you see here at low energy is the superconducting gap here, uh, which tells us that you have a, um, a superconducting um, uh, 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 interface, uh, which is actually rather well defined. In fact, we have a, a fairly hard gap with, hard gap with no uh, current flowing uh, at low energy. So at zero bias, uh, uh, this is an effective dot coupled to a normal reservoir. And at finite bias, which I will focus on right now, uh, you have a, a, a superconducting dot, a, a normal a bijunction out of equilibrium. Okay, and here is what we measure uh, if we now bias the system at, uh, at the finite uh, uh, bias here. Uh, and we scan now the, uh, the gate, so the, the average energy over this dot here. So that's the DC conductance. So we have just a peak, which is just a pretty noisy signal. Uh, and here we have negative differential conductance. So the, I mean, you can have many reasons for having negative differential conductance in the kind of system. But interestingly, what you see is that now if you look at the amplitude uh, of the uh, microwave signal transmitted through the cavity, this is the base. So this is the, uh, let's say, the, uh, the starting point. I mean, this is what, this is just the transmission one, essentially, of the, uh, or not, not just return. This is the base, let's say, of the uh, of the microwave signal uh, arising just from the transmission, the finite transmission, which is not one of the cavity. And what you see here is whenever you have this peak uh, in, in the conductance, you have a dip, so you have more absorption in the um, in, uh, in the in the cavity. So this is what uh, you would expect because essentially, when you reach an energy level in the electronic system, you expect to have more dissipation through the photons. That's what you would expect. But now what you see here is that now the cavity uh, uh, here goes above here, the cavity signal goes above the base of the, uh, uh, of the amplitude, which means that now you have, amplif you have amplification of the microwave photons in the cavity. So you have essentially, uh, you, the, the electronic system reduced, reduces the damping of, uh, um, of, the, uh, uh, of the cavity photons. So how come, uh, uh, this can be uh, because essentially you have plugged in a, an electronic system. You would expect to have just uh, uh, more dissipation on the, on the photonic system. So you can look at uh, if you want to understand that you have to look in, into more details of what is going on uh, as a function of both uh, the gate voltage, which controls the position of the energy level. So the energy level is depicted here at this resonance here. And the bias, uh, which uh, allows you to change the bias between uh, uh, the left, the, the normal electrode and the interferometric electrode. Okay. So what you see here, you see still the. This is the connection. You see the energy gap here. There is no conductance here, up to the noise of our experiment. Uh, and here in the microwave, you already see something different. You see that uh, in, in the gap here, what you see is that you have some line. And, and this line here uh, is definitely not present in the conductance. Uh, why is that? It's just simply because this line corresponds to a situation when uh, the, uh, dot, uh, the dot resonance is aligned with the Fermi energy of the normal reservoir. Uh, this does not contribute to the current because, the, because here you have the, uh, the superconducting gap, so there is no electron which can flow from here to, to there and to there. But, the, but because you have hopping back and forth of electrons to this normal reservoir, it contributes to the microwave. Uh, uh, it, it's, the microwaves are sensitive to that kind of process. So this is what we have here. 
And interestingly, what you see here at finite bias, these blue here parts, are again uh, regions where the amplitude is higher than what you would have just if you had just the tra bare transition of the microwave current. Okay, so let's compare, with, let's see whether we can actually understand this with the theory I just depicted to you uh, at the beginning. Um, uh, using this, uh, the, the, the Kelly formalism. And for that, we need to uh, figure out what kind of the parameters we have in the system. And this, uh, this is, these are the parameters uh, uh, which are pretty realistic in the system. And this is what the theory gives, uh, uh, the answer which the theory gives. So you see that it's, uh, it's fairly, I mean, uh, uh, similar. Uh, so you have the gap here. You have this uh, line here, which has actually some, exactly the same contrast uh, uh, with this hopping back and forth. And you have the regions here where you have microwave amplification uh, in the same. So you're going to tell me this is just this uh, color scale plot. I mean, you can do whatever you want, uh, which sometimes is true. But now if I present cut here, for example, with these three uh, dashed lines here, this is what we have uh, for the, uh, the, the data are the open circles. So this is the conductance. Uh, that's the phase of the transmitting microwave signal. This is the amplitude. And in the solid lines, uh, in the same color, these are the theory using the parameters I've depicted to you. So now we, we are able, uh, just with the, uh, to understand quantitatively with the theory, all I mean uh, uh, the data which we measure with the theory I presented to you. And in, interestingly, I, we are able to reproduce the, the parts here where we have microwave amplification. So, in, in fact, the, what I presented to you uh, uh, just in the before is this uh, gray part, and now we can really understand what is going on. So what is going on is actually uh, photon-assisted tunneling uh, in the, uh, between the, the BCS peak and the dot, uh, which was not essentially uh, measurable in the, in, in the current, uh, but uh, since the cavity uh, uh, has a, a very high sensitivity, we are able to see that uh, using the cavity signals. So in fact, uh, uh, so here, um, uh, uh, so this is more absorption. So this corresponds uh, to this process where essentially you absorb a photon from this BCS peak here, which is below the uh, dot level uh, to, the, uh, to, to this dot level. So this is that kind of transition which absorbs more photons than what you would expect. This is this part here. And now, in the other regime, when now the BCS peak is above uh, the dot, uh, 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 the dot level, uh, now you can emit a photon and, and, and have a, that kind of process uh, uh, um, uh, which, will be sen which will be sensed by the cavity. Uh, this uh, photon emission will lead to an enhanced amplitude uh, um, uh, transmitted through the, uh, the, the cavity. And this corresponds to a, a, a rate uh, which is about 2 megahertz, which uh, given the noise which we have uh, on, on the uh, uh, on our data, which is just due to the uh, sensitivity, to the stability of our device, uh, would not be measurable in the, in, the, in the DC current. So the photon emission here is visible only through the cavity. Okay. So this is this concludes my first part, uh, and uh, uh, so in my first part, I have shown you that one can actually uh, be using uh, this cavity QD architecture uh, go beyond the uh, atom photon, uh, let's say, coupled system. Uh, and study uh, uh, photon assisted tunneling between a quantum dot and superconductor. And it can be uh, essentially generalized to any kind of transport uh, phenomenon in mesoscopic systems. So, si since uh, 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 Mircha talked about my uh, fermions, uh, uh, so the cavities, uh, uh, I will uh, go on with our own uh, uh, proposal uh, to, uh, to uh, uh, test uh, uh, my fermions uh, using microwave <laughs> cavities because this is a direct perspective of, the, of, of this setup. So this is, uh, again, again, the general context of, uh, of um, uh, the, let's say, what we have in mind uh, for probing my fermions uh, in condensed matter using an uh, uh, engineer, uh, nanowires or nanotubes, in our case, coupled to a superconductor reservoir. And uh, uh, of course, there are many uh, works uh, devoted to this, uh, uh, starting from uh, uh, Mircha and uh, uh, Yaroslav uh, back in 2012. And the basic, uh, let's say, property which we want to test in that kind of setup is the uh, self-adjoint property uh, of the Majorana uh, uh, particle. So and I'm going to show you that actually this can be done using the setup 
which uh, 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 I just depicted to you. So that's the kind of um, density of states which you expect uh, if you go, I mean, uh, uh, through this uh, the topological transition. And here you expect to have from this zero uh, bias peak uh, this uh, Majorana fermions, which you because this is a function, for example, of this function of the magnetic field. And now the question is, which arises whenever you measure that kind of signal in the conductance, uh, how do you know that these are uh, not just uh, zero bias peaks arising from something else? Uh, so as I explained earlier, that's a quite an important question. Uh, and uh, in our case, uh, the idea is uh, uh, to use the cavity to actually directly demonstrate that these resonances are related to uh, self adjoint uh, uh, particle excitation. So we use exactly the same formalism as the one we tested on this uh, 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 normal uh, quantum dot superconducting setup. Uh, so now I just um, uh, show you again the formula, but uh, just to tell you that here we can use it. So we, we have in mind a, a spinful Kitani chain model. What is really important for us is really to actually model uh, accurately the coupling between this chain to the normal reservoirs, because in and also to the superconductor, uh, possibly with um, uh, uh, not a super uh, high I mean, hard gap. So this is uh, this is very important because this is actually uh, what is uh, um, um, available at present uh, uh, for the experimental setup. So these guys here uh, include the site uh, uh, of this uh, of the chain, the spin, uh, the graphene, and the NAMBU electron hole. Uh, uh, Okay, and so the idea is what the cavity uh, tells us when we are in such a situation where we see the conductance, uh, that kind of split in here which goes to zero, uh, and uh, whether how, how I mean the cavity interacts with that kind of doublet here. So um, as uh, 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 Mircea told you, uh, this internal transition is forbidden uh, just because of the self adjoint property of the natural of uh, Majorana pairs. Uh, and, uh, uh, and this is exactly what we see if we use this uh, charge susceptibility formalism. This is this transition A here. Now this is uh, uh, the uh, imaginary part, uh, so the, the amplitude contrast uh, of the microwave uh, uh, signal transmitted through the cavity. And similar features could be observed in the phase, but it's just more direct in, in the amplitude contrast. So this transition is the uh, 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 internal transition is, is forbidden, and this is this, what uh, we would expect to occur along this dashed line here. So, as expected, this, uh, uh, it's completely absent from the microwave signal, but interestingly, uh, uh, even though you assume that there is a tiny uh, uh, um, uh, residual density of states uh, in, in the superconductor, you have uh, these uh, uh, photon-assisted tunneling processes which are allowed, and this results into a, a, a step, not a resonance, but a step at half the transition we would expect for the internal transition. And for us, this would be a smoking gun of the self-adjoint property of the uh, um, um, quasi particle because experimentally we could say, okay, I expect the transition along this dashed line because I measure the transport. As I have shown you, we measure simultaneously the transport in the microwaves. So I expect the transition here at two epsilon. But the transition at 2 epsilon in the microwave is absent. However, uh, the systems are still coupled because I see the steps here at half of the energy of the transition. And by continuity, this would mean that here I have a, a self adjoint uh, 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 excitations, uh, subiotic, subiotic excitations. Okay. So that's, that's the end of, uh, of the, uh, um, uh, of the uh, hybrid superconductor uh, uh, mesoscopic systems. I'm going to show you now in the last part of the of the talk uh, that one can go. I mean, uh, so this was essentially uh, non-interacting or weakly interacting uh, uh, systems. One can actually go beyond uh, uh, the non-interacting systems and address questions where we have strong correlations between the electrons uh, in uh, the uh, electronic system which we are probing with the microwaves. And our favorite uh, strongly correlated system is the condo is a condo system. So that's condo physics in the law. So you have an increase of the resistivity uh, uh, at low temperatures. So this is, for example, an example for copper iron uh, with 0.2% um, of iron and copper. 
And, uh, and this is a generic property uh, of, of uh, I mean, this is, it occurs in many other uh, types of membranic models. And, and now, of course, the modern understanding of that kind of situation is uh, uh, essentially maps onto the Anderson uh, uh, model uh, of, the, of the magnetic impurity uh, diluted in a, in a host matrix uh, uh, of a metal. Uh, you have a single energy level here carrying a single spin. Uh, with strong on-site uh, charging, I mean, uh, 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 Coulomb repulsion, coupled to fermionic uh, reservoirs here. And that's exactly, I mean, the same systems, of course, which we, uh, the ones which we're, we can study with uh, our carbon additives coupled to uh, uh, reservoirs. And of course, this can be mapped onto a spin problem, uh, uh, as has been shown by Schrifen also in the 60s. So since it is, a, let's say, the simplest minimalic problem one can think of, it's, uh, and it's relevant uh, for many condensed matter uh, uh, problems, that's important to understanding uh, this uh, system in, in great details. And, uh, uh, and I'm going to show you that one can actually measure the compressibility, even the tiny compressibility of this system. This can be measured uh, with the microwave period. OK, why it's interesting to measure the compressibility of the system it's because uh, uh, now, if you go back to what is uh, going on, I mean, uh, um, uh, in the formation uh, of this uh, of the condo resonance, which is this many body resonance, which occurs, which is uh, which you can measure in the conductance of one the kind of system, uh, you uh, end up with the fact that uh, this arises uh, uh, from essentially uh, many uh, such virtual processes. So, for example, uh, you, you start with a down spin here, and you have an up spin sitting on the on the um, on the dot, and you have a virtual process which uh, where you have a, a charge hopping here, and uh, and uh, and being uh, essentially transferred, let's say, uh, 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 with a spin flip uh, uh, to uh, the the other side. You can also empty uh, the dot. This is again a virtual process, and fill it again with a spin of the opposite uh, uh, direction than the initial spin. So what you see here uh, is that you have a finite, uh, you have an electron which has been transferred from the left to the right. So you, now you can imagine that this, this can contribute to transport. Uh, uh, this is why you can measure it in the conductance. But the charge here, from here to there, has not changed. So the charge is completely frozen, uh, uh, whereas the spin here has split. So this decoupling of the spin and the charge degrees of freedom um, it's completely unusual. This is not a simple resonance level which you are dealing with. This is really a many-body uh, uh, um, uh, situation. And if, essentially, if you sum up uh, many such processes, you end up with this many-body resonance. So are we able to, to see that the charge is frozen, whereas you have a, a finite conductance from the system which tells you that the spin is still uh, flipping uh, back and forth? And I'm going to show you that so again. Uh, this can be done using microwave cavity. So here is the setup. This is pretty similar to what I have shown you at the beginning, except that you have a single quantum dot with the with the bottom gate here in green. Uh, these are the two normal electrodes, and here this is again a microwave cavity, uh, uh, wave gate cavity. So now the cavity photons are shaking back and forth the electronic gas, which uh, uh, at a low frequency with respect to uh, the relevant frequencies uh, uh, on the electronic system. Which means that the cavity photons are essentially probing the just the, uh, the compressibility of the of the electronic system, but as I told you, the compressibility is very interesting here because you have electronic interactions, and of course we can simultaneously measure the conductance in the microwave response as at the beginning. Okay, so let's just calibrate first the electric photon coupling strength, uh, and this can be done uh, using uh, uh, the fact that. Uh, we can, just by turning the knob, I mean, which is just a gate, we can choose to work either in the Coulomb blockade regime, so we have interactions but no correlations essentially, uh, or weak correlations, we have just a single charge piece here. Uh, and just by turning the knob uh, later on, we will go into the Coulomb regime, uh, uh, essentially by increasing the coupling between uh, the energy levels here to the reservoirs. So essentially what you see here are uh, the um, Conductance and phase uh, uh, contrast. So this is the conductance again at low frequency. At the phase contrast, this is the phase as uh, the, 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 the transmitted microwave signal at high frequency. You see similar things, and in particular, each time you have a peak in the conductance, you have a, a, a peak in the, in, in the compressibility. This is normal. I mean, this is what I told you. If you, uh, if you don't have, uh, uh, if you have hopping back and forth, uh, so in this situation. 
uh, when you have a resonance uh, in the conductance, you will have a resonance in compressibility. And if you are no conductance, you will have no uh, resonance in the compressibility. And this allows us to calibrate the electron photon coupling strength, uh, which is about 100 megahertz, that's what I told you. And this, but what is important is that this, is, this corresponds to a tiny charge sensitivity. It's 210 to minus per electron. And you can also compare this uh, uh, to the compressibility you would have from a piece of copper of one micron cube. This is uh, essentially seven orders of magnitude smaller than the, 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 the compressibility of a piece of copper of one micron cube. This is a tiny compressibility. So we are able to measure that with a cavity. What about in the Condor regime? So in the Condor regime, this is what we observe. So that's, uh, uh, again, the conductance as a function of the source ring bias in the gate. And what you see, you have like vertical and diamonds, but importantly, you have horizontal lines. So these are Condor ridges. If I do a cut, I have a peak in the conductance, and the peak in the conductance is, just, is directly this many body Condor resonance. If now I look into the compressibility, which is in orange, uh, from the microwave signal, I have absolutely no peak uh, in the compressibility. Uh, and uh, whereas at finite bios, I have charge transfer, where charge transfer is possible at high energy, and I have peaks both at, in the conductance and in the compressibility. So the phase in the conductance, so do not measure the same physics, and the color resonance is here uh, transparent to the photons, uh, uh, and, um, uh, and this means that this peak here has absolutely no charge compressibility. So we went to uh, Mansu Choi and Min Chou Lee and they did the uh, numerical renormalization group and the numerical renormalization group is able to reproduce this and also to the slight shift, so the fact that you have a peak here and, and no peak in the, uh, in the compressibility and the fact that here you have a slight shift between the charge peaks seen by the compressibility and uh, the compressibility. So this measurement here illustrates, uh, uh, and I think this is the first time this is done, uh, the separation of the speed and charge degrees of freedom in the, in the condo uh, system, which relies on electron-electron interactions. So we can see uh, uh, the uh, in similar features in the temperature dependence uh, uh, of the uh, conductance and compressibility. And again, uh, you see that the, the temperature dependence are uh, essentially uh, given by different uh, uh, energy scales, or different temperature scales which is also pretty well reproduced by uh, the energy data. Okay. As a conclusion, uh, I have shown you in the second part of my talk that uh, CQD architecture is also able to, uh, to probe more condensed matter problems. Uh, and thanks uh, to the larger charge photon coupling, uh, we have been able to observe I mean, uh, uh, essentially the suppression of the spin and charge degrees of freedom in the condo system. And the perspective of this setup uh, is, for example, a quantum quench of the, of the condo cloud where we could shine uh, abruptly uh, a large number of photons in the cavity uh, uh, to see uh, the transient dynamics of the condo cloud and more generally quantum simulation for the boson systems. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. You have mentioned the dive chain in cavity. On one hand, the dive chain model is a fine-tuned model. On the other hand, uh, your microcavity uh, radiation, I mean uh, microwave, is phase coherent. That means that you have all energies, all numbers of photons in your cavity, which interacts with, which can be emitted or absorbed by your electron subsystem. How do you know that uh, such absorption and emission process uh, will not destroy your fine-tuning fine needed for key dive chain model? Uh, are this process I mean, uh, are this process of emission and absorption coherent or, or what? Uh, thank you for the question. So, uh, in fact, what you should have in mind is that we have, a very, in this kind of uh, uh, cavity duty architecture, we have a very accurate control of the, in the number of photons inside the cavity. So we can put the cavity in the ground state and do really a, a completely spectroscopic measurement where we essentially have a, a, a very small excitation, but in a controlled <coughs> manner, of, uh, uh, of the, we set a very, very weak coherent field which corresponds down to one photon, for example. And this allows us to control I mean, the kind of uh, uh, photon field which is inside the cavity, which will interact with the, uh, uh, 
um, uh, with, with, with electronic system. This is true for any electronic system, not only the key kind of chain. So you can tell, okay, this is, uh, I am really in a linear regime, this you can tell, for example. So I know exactly from the power I have at the input of my cavity, I, I have a pretty good control, and we have other means now to, uh, to do this also, about the, uh, the um, average uh, number of electrons inside the cavity. And now if you go to more advanced system, you can even imagine to, to, to know what kind of field you have in the cavity, uh, either a semi-classical field like a coherent field or number states, for example. So this is, I would say, the most delicate way of probing uh, uh, with microwaves, uh, lay, let's say, an electronic system, because you can really control very accurately the number of photons inside the cavity. In the ground state, you just have uh, virtual processes uh, uh, allowed. I mean, you, you, you have no real, you can have a situation where you have no real photon or extremely weak uh, coherent field excitation. So I think this is, there is no problem with this fine tuning. Uh, this fine tuning is, is true for also for the double quantum, for the quantum dots, for all our system. We need to actually fine tune to be in the right region of the parameter space of our electronic system uh, to make, for example, um, um, as, as Matthew will show, um, a resonant interaction between the electronic system and the, uh, and the microwaves. The, we always have this problem. And since we have a very well controlled electromagnetic environment, we can do that with that kind of setup. More questions? Uh, I, I, in this, uh, I, didn't, uh, I, I got a little bit lost when you were talking about the, uh, the, the, the measurement of in, in, using the uh, uh, the, the, Myron, the, the wire with the Myron on it, uh, and I wasn't quite sure what was theory and what was experiment. Now this is, <laughs> so I hope I'm going to present you the experiment uh, in the near future, this but this theory. was just a theory proposal, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Questions? So what is the shoulder that you see uh, in the, the denser states there? In the bottom, you see the two, the two peaks? Yeah. Here? Yeah. So we, we think this is a correlation effect that essentially you have a renormalization, you have an interaction induced renormalization of the energy levels, uh, which essentially appear differently uh, in uh, the compressibility and in the conductance. And this is why you have this shift. 